at the Albany Institute of History and Art, located in Albany, New York. And the Albany Institute was founded in 1791, making it one of the oldest museums in the country. In fact, George Washington was president when the Albany Institute was founded. And we are older than the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C., and the Louvre in Paris. Here at the museum, we have 30,000 objects and over a million documents in our library collection. And every object here has some documented relationship to the art history and culture of the Upper Hudson Valley. And as you can imagine, with the Dutch being here very early in the Hudson Valley, we have numerous uh, examples of both material culture, furniture, uh, painting, silver, ceramics, and that type of thing, as well as manuscripts and deeds and letters and other kinds of descriptions of life in Albany in the Upper Hudson Valley. Lots of people came here, they settled here, they brought their families, and the material culture that we're going to be looking at today uh, really reflect these early Dutch families. There are a number of paintings that I wanted to talk about. Uh, there are three in particular on this wall. The first one is a portrait of Arianchi Quemans, and Arianchi Quemans was the wealthiest woman in the Hudson Valley. The Dutch, unlike the English, uh, both men and women could inherit land and businesses. So when Arianchi Quemans' father died, she and her brother inherited the estate. So she had this wonderful portrait uh, painted probably at the time of her marriage. We believe it's a marriage portrait because she holds a red rose, which is a symbol of love, and also she has a ring on her finger, and she is dressed very elegantly in the latest fashion with gold brocade on her dress and gold brocade on her shoes. And we also know that she was married at age 52, and the man that she married was age 29. The other significant thing about this portrait, it is the uh, earliest full-length portrait of a woman in colonial America. Another painting which uh, uh, is of Abraham Wendell, and it also shows the mill that he owned. And it becomes an interesting social and historical document because if you're looking at the mill, uh, you can see that there's a bake oven, there's some evidence that chocolate was made here, there's a water wheel, a type of particular kind of carriage and also fencing. So Abraham Wendell is a very, uh, very wealthy man. Uh, this painting over here is of a little boy by the name of Paul Gansvoort, and he wears um, clothing that he would have worn in the Hudson Valley. There's a very typical type of jerkin and uh, uh, vest and overcoat. On his finger, uh, there is a uh, an American goldfinch, and the reason this painting is also important, it is the first painting in oil depicting the Hudson River, a major waterway, which uh, was it's so important for all the trade, and the Catskill Mountains behind. The style of painting is very interesting. Uh, the artists were um, itinerant artists. They were called limners, which is uh, the, the uh, Latin term to draw. They were not trained, so these are not uh, you know, uh, academic artists uh, who are creating academic portraits, but in fact, uh, these were the artists that were available, and these itinerant artists would come by and paint the entire member of the family. Now, we just wanted to come back into storage so we could look at uh, uh, several watercolors that are very interesting. It's by James Eights, who was an, uh, lived in Albany, and he was a naturalist, so he was recording for posterity, if you will, what the streets of Albany looked like in around 1800. So looking at this particular watercolor, you can see the Dutch church that was built in 1715. There are also typical types of Dutch urban houses. The gable is facing towards the street, very distinctive. They have Dutch doors, which are doors that are cut in half, so you can open up the top half to let the air in and keep the bottom half closed to keep the animals out. Uh, another example, which you again can see these Dutch style uh, homes and the stoops, the English styled houses. This is interesting because their children flying a kite, some African Americans. Albany was a trading city during the uh, 17th century and the 18th century, and there were lots of different people who were living here. So among the other things the Dutch brought to New Netherland 
was this idea of uh, trade and tolerance. So you have a lot of different ethnic groups living and working in Albany and trading and settling in this area. And these uh, particular watercolors really reflect that. All right, now we're going to go into the silver vault in storage so we can look at, at some of the uh, other items that are very indicative of Dutch culture. In this case, we're going to be looking at a brandy wine bowl. And the brandy wine bowl was uh, very uh, were ubiquitous in terms of uh, Dutch culture. And they used it in the New Netherlands, and they also brought this tradition to uh, North America. And this particular bowl, beautiful bowl, was made in Albany by a Dutch silversmith working for uh, families. It would have been commissioned by a family. And the silversmith's name is Jacob Ten Eyck. And if you look at the, um, the decoration on the bowl, it's, they're beautiful uh, representations of flowers. So the silversmith would have looked at printer's guides or embroidery patterns that women would have uh, used for dresses to do the decoration on the bowl. And it's called a repousse. And they use this bowl for ceremonial occasions. And there would be a special mixture of brandy and spiced raisins and probably about three or four other kinds of alcoholic beverages all mixed together. And they would have a spoon and the bowl would be passed around to all of the guests so they all could partake um, from this special mixture to uh, celebrate. There's no evidence uh, the Dutch uh, use these in uh, the Netherlands. This seems to be a unique um, example of a tradition that started in North America. And these are called funeral spoons. And I just uh, want to show you um, uh, this funeral spoon. It's the earliest funeral spoon in the museum's collection. And I'm first going to just show you the spoon. And it is a Triffid style spoon. This is from 1687, so it's a 17th century spoon. And what makes it a funeral spoon is the fact that on the back, the birth and death date of a person has been inscribed. In this case, it's Killian. Van Rensselaer, who was the third patroon uh, living in Albany in the Rensselaerswick Manor. And he probably directed in his will or his family to give his friends and uh, family members a funeral spoon on his, upon his death so that you would have something to remember him by. Here's an example of a funeral spoon that was made in 1899. So it's hundreds of years later than the first spoon, and it was made by Catherine Gansfort Lansing upon the death of her husband, Abraham Lansing. And they were each of these were given to pallbearers at the funeral, very uh, good friends. And it was made in New York City in the style of a 17th century spoon. So in the Albany Institute's collection, we probably have over 50 funeral spoons. We've now moved down to the first floor of storage, and we're going to be looking at some very interesting examples of Dutch utility ware, ceramic pieces. They are very utilitarian. The shapes and sizes and the colors, the Dutch color uh, has not changed, did not change for about 100, 150 years. Some interesting examples here is a skillet made out of this earthenware, uh, a simple cup, a yellow cup. Another item that was very common is a colander. Again, utilitarian and brightly colored. You may um, have gone to other sites, New England sites, and certainly there are examples of this earthenware, but they uh, tend to be uh, just a red color with a little bit of decoration. The Dutch really liked color. The Dutch um, were politically, they were really only in charge uh, here in New York State for about 50 years, from 1624 to about 1656. However, th with, between their tolerance, religious freedom, and their great interest in trade and um, commerce are things that really stay are here today and are practiced uh, very well. I think the Dutch would be very proud in terms of uh, New York State and New York City in, the, uh, in these three areas.